Humans have been working with honeybees for at least 7,000 years that we know of due to cave paintings that show honey hunters gathering wild honey from hives. And, and in those paintings even, you'll see someone with a torch below the person hanging over the cliff on the rocks trying to get the honey and, and using the smoke. The first thing you want to do uh, is start with some good dry smoker fuel. And I like to use pine needles just because they're readily available and they light very easily. You don't need newspaper or anything to get them going. And they kind of smell nice when they burn. Short, quick puffs with the uh, bellows helps the, the fire to get going. And when it's burning really well, I'll add another small handful. And I'll get that going really well as well. One way to start in terms of dealing with mites is when you get your bees, get bees that have some proven resistance to begin with. And there are three primary strains of bees that have proven, uh, actually four types of bees you can get commercially that are proven to have some resistance. One is the Russian bees, because Russia's probably closest of all the European countries to India, where the Varroa mite's natural host is, the eastern honeybee, which is Apis serrana. So when you approach a hive, it's always best to approach from the side or from the back, not from the front, simply because the bees are coming and going from the front or wherever the entrance is. And if you're blocking their path, they may feel threatened, uh, like you're trying to prevent them from coming or going, and they're more likely to sting. So if you don't blow the smoke all the way so it goes inside, those guard bees are gonna be on high alert when you start opening the hive and you're probably gonna get stung. So you make sure the smoke goes all the way inside before you open the hive. Okay, now I can just take a peek here and I can see they haven't really drawn the combs out yet. Um, they got plenty of room. That's all good. That's why I just wanted to check and make sure. And this is most of what you do through most of the season. <laughs> I'm just, you take a peek inside and see if they have enough room or not. What we're seeing here is the burr comb that the bees will build between the bottom bars of the top box and the top bars of the bottom box. And in fact, here is a cell where they were raising a, a young drone, and when I separated the boxes, that drone got exposed. They give back more than they take. They, through pollination, they provide the plants the opportunity to breed and be abundant, so there's an abundance of plants, an abundance of fruits and nuts and seeds and berries and fruits and vegetables of all different sizes. And there's, there's abundance for everybody and all the other insects and animals and plants. And so what a great lesson to try to work into my life is how to live in such a way that by taking what I need from the world around me, I do it in a way that gives back and makes the world a better place like the bees.